So welcome to my series of video in statistics. And in this video, I'm going to teach on the z-score of sampling distributions. And I also teach on the fourth theory of sampling distributions. Now, I initially said that the series on sampling distribution is going to be two, but um, I have broken it into three. So please, when you are going over the videos, make sure you have three videos on the series on sampling distribution. So this is part two of the series on sampling distributions. Now, remember from the earlier video on Z-score, which I taught, that Z-score is simply standardizing a score, all right? Or it tells how far a score is from its mean. So it tells how many standard deviations a score is from its mean. All right, so to get more clarification on this, please watch my video on Z-score. It is part of the series of videos on um, descript numerical measures for descriptive statistics. Now, when it comes to sampling distributions and we compute sample mean, we can also compute the Z-score for a sample mean. What is then the z-square of a sample mean? The z-square of a sample mean shows how many standard deviations a sample mean is from its average. Now, remember that the average of all sample means, according to the first theory, the average of all sample means should be equal to the population mean. So if you want to know how far each sample mean is from its average, which is the population mean, they are talking about the z-score of the sample mean. So the z-score of the sample mean will be the score, which is the sample mean, all right? So the x here will be the sample mean minus its mean, which is the population mean, divided by the standard deviation of the sample. But remember that the standard deviation sorry, divided by the, the standard deviation of all the sample means, okay? So it will, be, it will have been divided by the standard deviation of all the sample means. Standard deviation of all the sample means. But remember that we also proved in theory two that the standard deviation of all sample means, or if you want to show the dispersion of sample means around their average, which is the population mean, that is the standard deviation of the sample means. And we proved that the standard deviation of the sample means is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, okay? So it means that the z-score of a sample mean is the sample mean itself minus the population mean over the standard deviation of the sample means, which is the same as the Population standard deviation divided by square root of sample size. Okay. All right. Now, if we have a large sample size relative to the size of the population, let's say your sample size is more than 5% of the population, and you are doing sampling, okay, and your sampling is being done without replacements, when you pick, you don't send back, okay we will have to adjust. When that happens, we would have to adjust the standard deviation of the sample means. Remember that the standard deviation of the sample means is population standard deviation divided by square root of n, okay? And this, the standard deviation of sample means is also called standard error. So it means that whenever we have a large, uh, whenever we have a large population, we have a large sample, sorry, relative to the size of the population. That means that the sample size is greater than 5% of the population. And we are doing sampling without replacing. So when we pick the sample, we don't send back. It means that we have to adjust the standard error by a correction factor. And then that correction factor is square root of population minus sample size over population minus one. So whenever, these two conditions as it's we always have to adjust the standard error or we, also have, we always have to adjust the standard deviation of the sample means by a correction factor of this, okay? 
So that is the meaning of this particular slide. Okay. So if you if you want to compute Z value, it's simple. First of all, determine the sample mean. After determining the sample mean, define the sampling distribution using theory three. Define the probability statement of interest, convert the sample mean to a standard guy Z value, and use the standard normal distribution to determine the desired probability. Okay, so let's assume the population mean is this. The population standard deviation is this. Okay, and then, Let's assume that we want to compute a z-score for a sample mean of 1.565. If you want to compute the z-score for a sample mean of 165, it will be the sample mean score minus population mean over standard error. Okay, so that would be 1.565 minus the population mean, which is 1.5, divided by the standard error, which is the sample size. Okay, so let's assume a sample size of eight because they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So assuming a sample size of eight, so divided by the standard error will be computed by this, the population standard deviation, which is 0.05 divided by the square root of the sample size of eight. So when you compute this, you get 3.67. Now the interpretation is that the sample mean of 1.565 is 3.67 standard deviations away from the population mean. It is 3.67 standard deviations away from the population mean. Okay, now let's talk about the central limit theory. Now, before we go there, note that in a test, okay, don't be expecting to get the sample means and all that. Sometimes you'll be doing it yourself, like how I showed you in part one of the series. So you, are, you must note that. Okay, so now let's go to the central limit theory, which is theory four of the theories of sample distribution. Now, even if your population is not normally distributed, let's listen carefully. You see, theory three says that theory one and two will hold if your population is normally distributed. Okay, that's what theory three said. Now theory four is saying that even if your population is not normally distributed, okay, but the sample size is sufficiently large okay, the sampling distribution will be normally distributed. Okay, as for reading the, 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 the slides, you can just read it, but I'm communicating the understanding here that even if we don't have a normal distribution population, okay, because remember theory three says that theory one and two will hold if the population, if the population is normally distributed. But theory four is saying that even if the population is not normally distributed, Even if the population is not normally distributed, and we have a large sample size, and we have a large sample size, what happens is that now, if the sample size is large, what it means is that we can assume that the population is normal. And if, when we assume that the population is normal, it means that theory one and theory two will still hold. So all that we are saying is that theory three says theory one and two will hold if the distribution is normal. 
But theory four is saying that even if the distribution is not normal, and we have a very large sample size, we can assume that the population distribution is normal, and we can assume that theory one and theory two holds. So it means that the larger the sample size, the better the approximation of the sampling distribution to a normal distribution, or the better the approximation of the population distribution to a normal distribution. So in other words, the, the higher the sample size, the likelihood that, the more the likelihood that, that that distribution will be normally distributed. Okay, so that is theory four or, this, or the central limit theory. So let's look at a population of this. And let's look at a sample size of two. When you pick a sample size of two and you draw a histogram and connect the vertices, it will look like this. But when you pick a sample size of five and you draw a histogram and connect the vertices, it will now become more normal. So it means that the higher the sample size, the better the sampling distribution. Or the higher the sample size, the more the sampling distribution will look normally distributed. All right, and that is the central limit theory. So this can be the population. When you pick a sample size of five and draw the sampling distribution, it will look like this. And when you pick a sample size of 30, it will look like a third one. So here we can see that the, the more the sample size, the better the normality of the sampling distribution. So there are more examples here. This is the population sample size of four and sample size of 25, we can see that sample size of 25 looks more normal than the sample size of four from the population, all right? So we are saying that the sample size must be sufficiently large for us to conclude that the sample distribution is normal. Now, in statistics, when we say a large sample size, we are talking about a sample size of 30 and above. We are talking about a sample size of 30 and above. That is a large sample size. Okay, so this will bring me to the end of part two of the series on sampling distributions. The next part I'll be teaching on sampling distributions of proportions. So let's meet in the part three.